All right, so today I want to go through my top five snakes that beginners should avoid when you're buying snakes at a reptile show. Now let me tell you, well, I've been on both sides of the tables at these shows, is selling snakes as well as looking at other people's stuff. And when I'm looking at other people's tables, there are quite a few different vendors that are selling some snakes that I would consider kind of a really highly advanced snake. I'm surprised that there's so many of them at the shows. And it's really not regulated, so you can sell whatever you want. But I would say as someone new, you're walking up to a table and you see a snake that you really like, you definitely want to be informed about that snake before you make the purchase. So I would say number one is number one is the reticulated python. And let me tell you, the reticulated python, if you go up to some of these tables, I'd say most of the snakes that are retics at these shows, they are 100% mainland reticulated pythons, which means, you know, within a few years, you know, four or five years down the road, that snake could potentially get over 150, 200 pounds for a big snake like that. And I actually got into retics. I have two of them. One of them is 50% Jampea Dwarf. And I thought, you know, I looked at this tiny little hatch thing. I thought, you know, you know, this, this is 50% Dwarf. How big can this get? And let me tell you, it was smaller than this snake when I, it was, it was probably a third of the size of this snake when I bought it two and a half years ago. And today, Lucy is about 75 pounds. She's almost Almost too much for me to handle and she is still growing she's about 14 feet long so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you Lucy and show you what a 50% dwarf reticulated python can grow up to look like all right so this is Lucy my reticulated python she is a big girl she's kind of in a crazy mood today I fed her one rat and she ate it and I fed her another one and she kind of jumped and bit herself and then she was like banging against the walls and everything and didn't eat the second rat and she's kind of in a kind of a fired up feeding frenzy kind of looking for another rat but you can see she is a really big girl this is a six foot enclosure and it, it, she actually will she actually if she stretches all along the back she is bigger than twice the length of this enclosure which is really big but she's not really that thick like a mainland and believe it or not this is kind of you know a modest size if you want to get a really big snake without getting a mainland I'd go for something like a 50% Jampea Dwarf or maybe even some of the Super Dwarf localities, but keep in mind if you mix the Super Dwarf and the Dwarf, you're thinking you're getting a small snake, they can still get, you know, 20, 30, 40 pounds, something like that. So you're still looking at a pretty big snake. And I say the biggest challenges of a snake like this is kind of, you know, one, one is the food because you have to pay for the food and the food's pretty expensive for a big girl like this. And I'd actually open it up to get a little bit better you know, a uh, video of this where we can see it a little bit clear, but she's kind of in an unpredictable mood. That's the other thing is, is you really have to watch the mood on these retics because they can leap an incredible distance and come out after you, kind of just looking for a rat, not really being aggressive. And you definitely don't want a big snake like this that's aggressive. That would be frightening, let me tell you. And the other thing, probably the biggest thing that I struggle with this girl is chasing the enclosure size. So you start with a little tiny hatchling in your hand and it gets bigger and bigger and you go into a bigger tub and I went to a boa tub and then finally I went to this one and I probably spent, you know, I, I spent a lot of money kind of chasing the enclosure sizes, you know, from one to the other. And almost, you know, she's almost to the point where, you know, ideally she could almost be in like a zoo tub type setup where you could have like a 10 by 10 room or maybe even a 10 by 20 and then have like a little pond and something to climb on and a bunch of stuff like that. That would be really the ideal setup for a girl like this instead of, you know, just in an enclosure sitting like this on my pool table in my basement. So I would say, you know, as far as retics, they're really cute when they're small, but let me tell you, they get really big and they are a challenge. All right, so the number two snake that I would avoid if I was a beginner getting my very first snake that would be a green tree python and you may have seen them before that essentially what it is 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 it's a snake on a stick they just kind of wrap up on a stick and just sit in the enclosure and they don't really do anything they just kind of sit there it's it's a really interesting display animal you know if you always want to see your snake out in the open and on display it's kind of cool whereas if you got a ball python in a glass tank with a hide 
the ball python is always going to be in the hide and it looks like you have an empty tank <laughs> whereas a green tree uh, they're out in the open another good thing about the green trees is they are extremely colorful they usually start out like a bright yellow or blue or a bright red and they, are they all turn green as they mature and it's a pretty interesting snake the problem is is you really can't handle a green tree python it's one of those ones that you know I've seen some people try to handle their green trees and and you can if you're really slow and methodical and you take them off of the the, the kind of the branch that they're coiled up on you, you kind of approach them at a certain angle but it's not like a ball python like this where you can just kind of mess with them and you're not going to get bit <laughs> you don't want a green tree python like on your neck like this it's pr probably a bad idea as a matter of fact I've seen a lot of people uh, say that the green tree pythons have the biggest teeth and the most painful bites of all snakes so that's another thing to consider so what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to show you uh, what a green tree python looks like we'll just do an image search on Google if you haven't seen one you know it's pretty interesting let's check it out all right so this is what a green tree python looks like and let me tell you I am no expert when it comes to green tree pythons as a matter of fact I saw on a video someone said that all of them turn green as they mature into adults but I'm starting to wonder if that's really the case because I'm seeing a lot of them where you know it looks like especially like this one right here this one looks like it's pretty old and it still has a lot of the blue coloration instead of just the green so I was, I was thinking maybe they don't actually all turn green as adults and if you look at some of these colors they are really amazing you got some reds I mean some of these are just really wild looking that's pretty pretty incredible so, you know they're they're really colorful snakes they're really good display animals one thing you just have to keep in mind is you really can't handle them very much and that is one of the big things you have to keep in mind when you buy a green tree python all right so the number three snake that i would recommend beginners steer clear of that is the blood python and really the blood python is kind of uh, kind of in a gray area i would say because it can be a really nice snake so I, i've actually seen a lot of big breeders where Work with blood pythons and if you don't tame them down as, as a small snake and really socialize them really well they can get extremely defensive as a matter of fact I've seen some breeders trying to clean the tubs on some of their blood pythons and they're so defensive they can't even get in there to clean the tub because the blood python is just kind of going crazy and it's it's kind of like the opposite with a ball python it's for, like a ball python you could put it in a tub for two years and just keep throwing rats in and then and at the end of two years you pull it out and socialize it for the first time and it's pretty tame as a matter of fact it's, you don't really need to socialize these as a matter of fact when I went to the show there's a lot of people coming up to my table and say hey how much work did you put into these snakes to get them so tame and I don't really work with them at all and they're just tame by nature and I would say a blood python is pretty defensive by nature but I've seen some really nice beautiful large blood pythons that people have worked with for a long time and they are puppy dog tame so really if you're getting a blood python I would recommend getting a small one and socializing that snake a lot the other thing with a blood python is that it can get really big not as big as a reticulated python but it can get really big and heavy bodied and I want to show you a few photos on the internet of some really cool blood pythons alright so this is what a blood python looks like it's a really cool looking snake and you can see they're really heavy bodied if you take a look at this one they get really thick and chunky it's pretty amazing and they can get incredibly large uh, it's pretty surprising how big they can get as a matter of fact look at this one right here this one that is like your typical adult blood python it is a really heavy duty snake it's it's pretty big and some of them can really have some really interesting colors and patterns I'm not really into the blood so I don't really know all the morphs that they have you know ball pythons and retakes pretty much have more more and more than any, but I've actually never really seen some of these blood pythons. That is really cool. They're doing some really cool stuff 
with blood pythons. So I'd say they're really cool snakes. They can have pretty big clutch sizes, quite a few eggs, and you know it, they get really big and impressive. Blood pythons are pretty cool, but if you get a blood python, I would definitely tame it down as much as possible. All right, the number four snake on my list would be the Brazilian rainbow boa. And the biggest mistake most people make is not keeping the humidity high enough. It needs a humidity of 70% or above. And as a matter of fact, if you got that snake, brought it into like a 10% humidity here in Colorado, it would not survive very long. And the problem is, is if you don't constantly check and make sure the snake has the high humidity, if you let it dry out for just a few days even, I've heard where you can actually kill your snake from low humidity. So let me show you what a Brazilian rainbow boa looks like. Okay, so this is what a Brazilian rainbow boa looks like. These are really beautiful snakes. And as a matter of fact, these are actually live bears, so they don't lay eggs. They actually have clutches of live babies, kind of similar to, similar to other boas and garter snakes. The other cool thing about this snake is it has an iridescent sheen to it, which is pretty cool, similar to the golden child reticulated python. And there's a lot of people that actually keep them and breed them. Look, there's a whole bunch of, here's a whole clutch of baby Brazilian rainbow boas, which is pretty incredible. So they're, you know, they're not impossible to keep. I would say you can keep them, just don't ever let them run out of moisture or humidity in their hide. All right, so before I give you my last snake, I have to put out a disclaimer. I would say that you could actually keep and breed a lot of these snakes. They make really good pets. You just have to know what you're getting into when you buy one of these snakes. And it's not a snake that a beginner should have, I think, for the very first snake, just kind of walking into a reptile show and bringing a snake or buying it for your kid or something like that. You definitely need some experience with some of these snakes. And number five on my list, which I've actually seen at the local shows here quite a few times, that is the green anaconda. And let me tell you, that snake, that is the heaviest snake in the world. It's not necessarily the longest. The, the reticulated python holds the record for the longest snake, but the anaconda, specifically the green anaconda, holds the record for the heaviest snake. So you're talking about, you know, an adult anaconda that can get upwards of 200 to 250 pounds. That is a huge snake. And let me tell you, the anacondas are a completely different ball game. The anacondas are live bears, which is kind of interesting. And in the wild, they spend most of their time in or around water. As a matter of fact, if you go up to a lot of these zoo exhibits, they'll have this green anaconda, mostly underwater, with just kind of their nose sticking up out of the water. And it's kind of interesting to watch them feed them. They grab something like a rabbit and pull it underneath the water and eat it. It's pretty amazing to see an anaconda in action. The other interesting thing about anacondas in the wild is when they actually mate, there's one male with multiple females and they make a huge mating ball, which is kind of interesting. If you ever looked at the breeding of anacondas, it's really something unique. It's kind of like I've seen uh, maybe garter snakes kind of do the same thing, but you know, with a big breeding ball with anacondas that are all like 200 pounds, that is an amazing sight to see if you've ever seen that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what a green anaconda looks like real quick here on the internet. All right, so here's a few pictures of green anacondas and you can see, <laughs> looking at this one, this is a really, really huge snake they get really big and I've actually seen some people where you know they'll take a green anaconda as a juvenile and tame it down super tame so it's puppy dog tame but you have to realize this snake gets incredibly large let me go over to this page here this is an example of how big a green anaconda can get it is a really big snake all right, so those are the five snakes that I think beginners should avoid when if you do jump into one of these projects, I would say jump in with extreme caution and be knowledgeable of the snake that you're getting because I've actually gone to these reptile shows and you see this whole table full of little deli cups full of snakes. I mean, hundreds of them and you walk up and you pick one up and I actually looked at one and I was like, I can't believe in this little cup right here, this is a green anaconda. It kind of just 
you know, blew me away that there's a green anaconda at one of the local shows and someone could just come up, spend a couple hundred bucks and walk away with a green anaconda. And you don't want to get home not knowing what you're getting into when you get down the road and pretty soon you're feeding it rabbits and it's a 200 pound snake and you're thinking about, you know, building out a whole room. As a matter of fact, you know, for one of these snakes, I would say you would probably want to have some kind of an aquatic set up on one side, land on the other, and probably like a 10 by 20 foot enclosure for some of these snakes almost like kind of a zoo exhibit for some of these snakes so you really have to think about what you're getting into when you jump into some of these projects so that's it thanks for watching and I will see you next time